Thank you all very much. It's great to be here at KluCon 2023. I'm a little casual today after, uh, well, my pants are still not dry yet. So uh, today we'll talk about Kama Ilio with uh, FreeSwitch as a B2B UA. Um, the agenda that we have is a quick discussion about who am I, it's existential really, what is Kama Ilio? Uh, we're not going to talk about what FreeSwitch is because this is KluCon and I try to know my audience, and if you don't know what free switch is, you will definitely by the end of the day. Uh, Kama Ilio using uh, two modules and scaling. Then we'll talk about the Kama Ilio with free switch as a B2B UA. And I'm gonna try to leave a good amount of time for questions, which is my absolute favorite part of the presentations here at KluCon. And generally the questions have always been good, so I'm gonna try to go quickly, especially with when I talk about myself. Hi, I'm Fred. I'm a VoIP consultant with LOD. I'm proud, very proud and honored to be a member of the Kama Ilio project. I created API Band a few years ago. If you don't have an API Band key, please, no reason not to, it's free. I'm a very proud father and I'm based out of Florida. I chose this picture because my favorite ClueCon moment was I accidentally wore this same exact shirt and uh, T-shirt combination and hat while I was on stage with that picture and thought, time to get new clothes. Okay, what is Kama Ilio? First, Kama what? So Kama Ilio is a Hawaiian word. It's a great way to pronounce it there if you've never tried to say Kama Ilio, so broken it down there, thanks to Facebook. And Kama Ilio means to talk and to converse, and so it was a, chosen to help express what Kama Ilio does, which is help you talk and converse. Kama Ilio is an open source SIP server. We're module based, which allows us to be extremely fast and unique and tidy for your special situation. You load the modules that you need, much like FreeSwitch does. Uh, we're by heart a SIP proxy, a SIP registrar, a SIP application server, a dispatcher and load balancer, as well as a web socket server. Completely open source, about 21 years ago. A brief history of Kama Ilio is it has continuous development since 2001. It started out the Focus project in Germany. Uh, the SARE project was released um, under GPL for open source in 2002 and branched in 2005 to OpenSARE. In 2008, OpenSare became Kama Ilio, and there was another fork, which clearly is OpenSIPS. Um, in 2008, uh, Sare and Kama Ilio decided to team up and become the SIP router project, where they would merge back together again. Um, and in 2010, Kama Ilio 3.0 had that full integration with the original Sare. And we're currently at Kama Ilio 5.7. And a new version's coming out as time progresses. Quick facts, 5,000 plus calls per second as a load balancer in stateless mode, not a problem. Okay, this is just not something we even sweat about. You have about four gigs of RAM, 300,000 endpoints with registrations wouldn't be something that we would consider crazy. So when we talk Kama Ilio, since it's just doing SIP, unlike FreeSwitch, which is also worried about media and all this other kind of stuff, Kama Ilio can be extremely focused and powerful. It allows us to do very high numbers of SIP-related functions. As I said, we're module-based, so we have um, 150 plus modules. It's closer to about 200. Your typical use cases with Kama Ilio, would be as a SIP edge router or kind of like an SBC. So the first um, entrance into your application that you're running, let it be Kama Ilio to protect against unwanted SIP traffic as well as ensure that the right traffic gets to your media servers. Also a load balancer to help handle all that traffic. We can do least cost routing is another typical use as well as a WebRTC, TLS, and TCP bridge. So you can have all those endpoints come to Kama Ilio in whatever perspective they want, whether it's even IPv6, 
Kama Ilio could then translate or bridge that to just simple UDP IPv4. And so then that would keep your free switch again more uh, optimal since it doesn't have to worry about TCP or TLS. Sometimes it's easier to think about what Kama Ilio is not. So Kama Ilio does not handle media. There's kind of like a little asterisk there because some of the modules actually let us touch media, which is a newer kind of concept for some of us older people. Uh, we do have RTP engine uh, capabilities and in integration as well as RTP proxy. And another one, I think it's LRK proxy. Um, but so we can use RTP engine and media servers like FreeSwitch and help them handle the SDP and everything like that to set up calls. Um, and then, like I said, there's a couple of modules that let us uh, directly touch media as well. Um, but more importantly, Kama Ilio is not a back-to-back -back user agent or B2B UA. It is just simply not. So there are some modules that help us with hiding topology, if that's your main goal. We have uh, the Topos module and the Topo module, which I'll talk about uh, right now. All right, so let's talk about those two modules and some scaling. When we talk scaling, when you start getting into more advanced or uh, reliable type of architecture, something that you see might look like something like this for geographical high availability, right? I might have an East Coast and a West Coast. Let's just use those as examples. Uh, behind my East and West Coast comma ilios, I would have media servers, for example, uh, FreeSwitch in our case. And let's say this was your typical cloud type of deployment because that's all, you know, as buzzy as it can be with AI and blockchain and cloud. But, you know, so let's say I had a cloud-based SQL Server, a cloud-based Redis storage, so either do that or in the same aspects as a traditional data center, I might have one on East Coast synced. In our case, Kama Ilio can talk to each other with a special um, distributed messaging queue called DMQ, which is built right into Kama Ilio. And so that could sync up your coasts. So if we lost one, we have complete reliability to the other one. Traffic could just migrate over there. As we would grow, again, since Kama Ilio, one single unit can do you know, incredible numbers, generally, you just have you know one or two at the main data center, but you could always grow more common ilios as your numbers greatly, greatly increase. Um, so you know if you're doing let's say 20,000 calls per second or something like that. Um, and then as far as media handling, you can always add more uh, free switch or media servers as needed, kind of an N plus one architecture, which allows you to grow and scale uh, both horizontally and vertically. What helps you with this kind of scaling is this module based. Uh, so we can have um, high CPS, low CPU. You load just the modules you need. If you don't need to do anything with MySQL, you don't load it. If you don't need to do anything with NAT, don't load it. This H table is a module, for example, that allows you to do your internal caching of memory. Uh, it's a hash table. It's uh, one that allows you to also scale greatly. I talked about DMQ, which is our distributed messaging queue. Load balancer, so a typical use might be to have comma ilio that load balances to, let's say, several other comma ilios as you scale. Kemi is something that is really neat for helping you uh, scale out in terms of resources, which some people don't think about is uh, as you scale and increase, sometimes you need more talent and it's harder and harder to get people that understand SIP, let alone telecom, things like that. So Kemi is a great introduction to Kama Ilio a few years back. Uh, it's an embedded language interpreter, so you can write Kama Ilio in Lua, Python, JavaScript, Ruby on Rails, things like that, which will help your um, resources grow and you can program as you need and offload some of what you need to do into a language that you're already familiar with. Uh, we have internal APIs uh, to help manipulate and change aspects as you grow. And again, M plus one architecture is the best way for scaling there. Topology hiding. 
uh, basically hides SIP routing headers. It can be used stateless or stateful and has no dependencies because the uh, traffic, your SIP traffic ends up being just uh, kind of encrypted. Um, so it's, it's not the prettiest to look at, but it effectively hides all of your topology headers and automatically replaces it. And since it's not dependent on anything like a database or anything, it can survive um, uh, geographical moves, it could survive restarts, anything that you want. It's extremely performative, um, and it handles most of what you would need if you wanted some topology hiding. Topology stripping is another aspect, and it keeps it cleaner, and it just removes topology headers that are unneeded by the next hop, okay? It will bring them back when the traffic is needed and automatically switch those out. Because of that, it does uh, require a database, but it also results in extremely clean uh, SIP traffic, you know, so give or take. Between Topos and Topo, uh, you can handle most of your, most of what you would want a B2B UA for can be handled with just those two modules, which is extremely exciting, as well as with RTP Engine. I don't want to get too much into RTP Engine because Richard Fuchs is here. In fact, he's on next. And uh, since he is the main developer of uh, RTP Engine, uh, there's no better person to talk to RTP Engine than him. In fact, I've asked him questions even uh, before the conference has started. Uh, but RTP Engine is a powerful RTP proxy. Um, it allows you to uh, run in the kernel space. Uh, so handling, let's say, 4,000 calls on the same system is, you know, not unheard of. And you can also run multiple nodes. It integrates with uh, Redis as well so that you can have some um, incredible failover for uh, high availability. So if you lost an RTV engine node, you can bring it back on another side. It's fantastic. Um, where I really love it is on some of the DTLS bridging to UDP. So it can take a WebSockets call and then bridge it to just regular SIP RTP, as well as SRTP uh, to RTP type of aspects. But sometimes you do end up needing a true back-to-back -back user agent. The basic concept, if I wanted to incorporate, let's say, FreeSwitch as that B2B U agent, would be that I don't need media to go through this. Okay, so if I just want the SIP to have a back-to-back -back user agent, I can use Comma Ilio, like I said, as that transport bridge. Free switch just basically gives me a new call ID for the second leg. Um, we strip down free switch uh, dramatically so that it really doesn't have a lot of the extra class five features that you would need normally when running free switch. So it keeps the SIP smaller because you'll notice by default if you're running most modules, you know, for example, your allow statement might be, you know, 14 paragraphs. Um, I have, I don't want you to worry about uh, configs because those are always freaky when people are presenting. So I have on here, um, I put all the configs that I have on GitHub. So if you just go to github.com slash Fred Posner slash Klucon 2023, I have the comma ilio config as well as the, any of the free switch configs I would have changed. In my concept here, I have, I'm gonna try this. I have here comma ilio as a internal IP and you can have it as an external IP with an internal NATed IP. Free switch right here is listening on 5060, so I'll send traffic to there. Um, so this one is 5060. Look at how great I write. And then on this one, comma ilio is. I'm writing on the screen. Okay, so those numbers on the screen is what I was writing at. So comma ilio is sending traffic to free switch from port 5080. It's being received on free switch on the internal profile at 5060. FreeSwitch is only writing or is only running an internal profile because if you start running FreeSwitch at scale, you know that you end up, the more profiles you have, it has a cost. So on this one, it's just one profile, runs really good. The config that I have for 
um, B2BA, B2BUA and uh, free switch is extremely simple. Destination comes in prefixed by B2BUA dash whatever. Okay, that activates this uh, extension. Um, it writes a little comment. It then figures out, okay, who's the host? Because let's say I had multiple comma ilios and it knows that it's port 5080. It's gonna bypass the media, which keeps the media out of it. Um, it's not gonna take any of the custom X headers that I send, making it a nice B2B UA, clean SIP on the other side. It's gonna add a SIP header with the UUID of this leg so that it can see that going to the next call and then just send it out. And that's it. Very, very simple. So what would happen is, this would be an example SIP traffic from uh, comma ilio or from your endpoint to comma ilio. So in this case, I used um, SIP P because I was just throwing a ton of traffic at it. Uh, so it comes from, uh, in my case, 192.168.8.3 to my comma ilio, which is at .86 on 5060. Okay, and so uh, the number is a conference server that we have at LOD, 859-721-1046. So it comes into there. If you notice, the SDP has that local IP in it, the 8.3 IP. Comma Ilio then takes it to free switch and it adds in the request user B2B UA dash. So if you notice, it does that so that the free switch can know to run it as a media, um, I mean, as a B2B UA. It has its via in there. It's coming in from port 5080 to free switch on port 5060. Comma Ilio can handle multiple sockets so it knows okay, this is my free switch side, this is my regular SIP side. It's keeping the SDP as it should be, so it's just going direct to the, to the client. So that's how free switch goes to, um, so that's the SIP to free switch. The answer that free switch gives back to that leg um, just has in there the, um, the contact so that you can see it's still there, as well as uh, the the SDP is of that far end. In this case, my carrier is still on the same network because it's just a test. But it's dot .61, which is the ultimate point it went to. So you have my endpoint going directly to that endpoint for media. It's not going through free switch at all. And uh, you know it's just keeping on there. And on the B leg invite, the way it goes out, is uh, you can see that uh, the X header with the UUID, so you can track that, as well as you can see that it's just passing along the original endpoints SDP information. So the allows and the allow events are much smaller, <laughs> um, and that's because we really stripped down the modules.conf in FreeSwitch to keep it a very simple B2B UA. We don't need it to do, you know, things like conference and stuff like that. Well, I mean, just conference. We don't need it to do uh, some of those extra things. But free switch will automatically add in, report um, the remote party ID, anything you want. So why do this? Sometimes things are better together, right? Ice cream cone by itself, kind of crummy. I mean, it tastes good, but it's crummy. Same thing with ice cream, but put them together, you have something really special. Same thing here with free switch and comma ilio. Okay, it gives us a lot of options. So with this setup, I may never need to use free switch whatsoever. I may never need to go into that call and do anything other than have a hidden caller ID. But if I do need to go in and let's say kill the call, extremely easy. I could just do UUID, kill that UUID, call ends, okay? If I decide that for whatever reason, maybe now, oh, it's been, you know, person alerted us, this is a bomb threat or something like that, and I need to move the media to free switch and record it, I can run a media, take over the media, I can then record the call. So it still gives me options 
on anything I want to do with that call. I can, from FreeSwitch, refer it out. I can, from FreeSwitch, bridge it to something else, bridge something, you know, take over the media and now do bridging in a third leg, fourth leg, however you want to do it. So typical call, you may never touch it. But when you do need it, you have options. And then because of free switch and the way Camellio is, you can control those all by um, API, right? It's great for um, on-net calling. So if you're running uh, multi-tenant, you have one tenant call to another, and you want to change that call ID for the B leg so that it's easy to keep track of calls on each customer side, this is perfect for that. OK, it's highly performative. So since I'm not doing media, FreeSwitch can just do tons of simultaneous calls like this, right? Because it's, it's just not destroying anything CPU-wise. So thousands of calls per uh, box without media is not a problem. Very high calls per service. One of the things that I've changed inside uh, the switch.com, for example, is increasing the calls per second up to over 500. And that's the main reason why I like using free switch as a B2B UA. Give me options. I'll still have the media, let's say, on RTP engine if needed. Or if I can just even keep it outside my network, like most carriers do, even better. But this will give me a tremendous amount of options uh, for whatever's needed in terms of your platform. With that, I've tried to leave some time here for questions. Whoops. And I guess let's go to my calendar. All right, we're back. And so questions. Um, QXORK.com is the best way to reach me. Um, please come to Camellia World 2024, hopefully in Berlin again, but to be determined. If you want the slides from this, pgpx.io slash cc2023 has the slides and a link to the GitHub and as well as API van and some other things. For more information on Kama Ilio, come to kamailio.org. We also have a matrix um, space, so we're very uh, open for communicating a very active mailing list. And there's another talk today from Daniel, as well as a Kama Ilio Lunch and Learn, and we'd love to answer your questions there as well. But with that, I do have time for questions here. You do, Fred. You've got at least seven minutes for questions. Who's got a question for Fred okay. on the subject of Kama Ilio and FreeSwitch? Yep, so Kama Ilio, FreeSwitch, API BAM, whatever you want. Oh, yeah, API BAM. Use that myself, Fred. It's a wonderful service. Okay. Well, this may be a first. Yeah. Do you think it's the layout of the room? Because it's kind of deeper this time, it isn't is it? Deeper. Rather than broader. Wow. Okay. <laughs> With no question. Oh, uh, there's a question, question just there. Yes. Thank you, sir. Start the ball rolling. When we if still we, have the bakery, I give you a If we've got a handheld mic at all, there's Abby coming with the handheld mic. Here's the gentleman <laughs> just here. She'll run round. She's very agile, that Abby. Thank you. Kalaminia uh, can't, uh, can't handle um, the RTP. So, um, it's kind of safe proxy. It can convert TLS from outside. Then inside face switch runs the safe on UDP, right? Uh, what about SRTP from public? So can it trans uh, translate SRTP to RTP to inside face switch or, or, or the SRTP will directly talk to uh, from outside public to inside free 3 server? There are two ways that this can be handled. The basic question is, you know, he rightfully called out that I said that uh, Kamaelio does not do um, RTP, and it does not. However, Kamaelio works with several of the RTP proxies out there, such as RTP proxy, and I know Maxim's here, um, as well as RTP engine, which is the next talk. Um, and so with that, for example, with RTP engine, um, Kama Ilio will initiate that um, uh, directive to RTP engine to, let's say, transfer one leg, which is SRTP, to FreeSwitch being RTP. 
Now you can just have the media go directly to uh, FreeSwitch if you wanted, and let's say have FreeSwitch handle the SRTP, but then you have to, you know, you can do less on FreeSwitch because it's, you know, if it's doing TLS and everything like that. So if you lock down FreeSwitch where only comma ilio um, and let's say RTP engine can talk to it, then I like to bridge it at the um, ingress or egress to the network so that that leg to the public would be SRTP, the inside would just be all UDP and RTP. And in the same aspects, I can have a WebRTC connection. And so that DTLS can also be trans, um, transcoded to um, just regular RTP. So that RTP engine will handle all that and it does it in the kernel, so it's still extremely performative. And keeping it there, that was a great question. It was a great question, thank you, sir. Abby's got a question there. Um, we've got a question from the live stream. Uh, does Kama Elio support iOS slash Android push notifications? There are modules within Kama Elio that can work directly with um, calling those types of um, pushes. So what ends up happening is you do a, a suspend and a resume, and it's very typical, for example, for um, you to have a WebRTC endpoint, that's where it's mostly seen, but you see it sometimes in SIP apps where it comes in, it sends out the push, um, and then that when that endpoint then registers, it continues the call uh, to that endpoint. So the simple answer is yes. That's a good simple answer, Fred. Excellent, okay. We have got time for, oh, there you go, Diego's got a question as well. Thanks, friend, for the presentation. I, I have two, two questions. One is, uh, would you recommend this setup, so coming to free switch in a multi-tenant environment? And the second question is uh, about the media. Uh, it's very good for voice. Uh, do you think uh, in the future, or maybe, I don't know, even now, it, can support also other media apart from voice, like uh, video and messaging maybe. I'm thinking to some load balance also in other application or just voice. So, all right, so three questions in there. So one, do I recommend this setup for multi-tenant? Absolutely. Um, Kama Ilio uh, is um, huge multi-tenant. It has multi-domain, we call it. Um, but yes, this is, um, I recommend Kama Ilio for almost anything. Single tenant, multi-tenant, multi-single tenants, however you want to do it. We, we will be happy to take on uh, that, that call load. And free switch is also multi-tenant. So that, that first, um, and let me go back to um, the slide that had whoop, this one. So this, for example, of uh, Kama Ilio with multiple free switches uh, that you could load balance would handle a, a tremendous amount of uh, client traffic, just tremendous. Um, so th this would be a typical architecture that I might recommend. In terms of um, codec support, Kama Ilio supports all codecs that have been written and unwritten because we don't touch the media, so we just pass those on to the appropriate endpoints. So as long as, FreeSwitch, for example, would support um, the codecs being used by the endpoint. Um, Kama Ilio wouldn't uh, be a factor for that. So Kama Ilio itself supports all uh, codecs. Um, RTP Engine has a set of codecs that it definitely supports. Uh, same with RTP Proxy. Um, did I miss the third part? Do you feel your question was answered there, Diego? Or your questions? Camelio does all SIP types, so um, message, uh, refer, info. Um, if it's SIP, Camelio handles it 100%. P yeah, purely on the messaging. As, as Fred said, the actual media, of course, is separately handled by RTP proxy, RTP engine, free switch, asterisk. Yeah. And then Camelio also has um, support for, let's say, IMS, uh, which is uh, very common in, in some other aspects, but I'm out of time, so we'll be more than happy to answer those questions. You are out of time, Fred, but you're here for the rest of the show, aren't you? I am here. Let's say a big <laughs> thank you to Fred. Thank you all. <laughs>